Hello friends, I am Dr. Vijay Prakash and today I will be talking to you about impressions in fixed prosthodontics. As we know uh, that the practice of fixed prosthodontics requires precision and that is the reason in every step uh, you have to be very precise. Needless to say that you have to be very precise in making impressions because greater the accuracy of the impressions, greater uh, the accurate accuracy and precision of your fixed restoration will be there. So as we see in fixed prosthodontics that most of the uh, restorative that is most of the processes whether it is a single crown, fixed partial dentures or an inlay onlay any type of restoration they are uh, made by indirect method on the cast and they are fabricated in the lab. So the the lab requires the precise detailing uh, of the impression uh, that is the tissues of the patient and that is provided through impressions which is taken by the clinician. So you have to be very accurate when you are making an impression of the prepared tooth and so that you can have a precise fitting restoration delivered to you by the technician. For making impressions there are number of impression materials which are available. Uh, right from uh, reversible hydrocolloids or they can be elastomeric impression materials which can be polysulfides, poly, uh, vinyl, ether, uh, then uh, your addition polysilicones or condensation polysilicones and many other type of materials which can be used for making impressions. Here we are not going to go into detail about impression materials because then it will be a very big discussion. I will limit myself here in discussing various impression techniques which are used in fixed prosthodontics. So first is what is the requirement for an impression material. First thing is it should be biocompatible, it should have excellent shelf life, uh, definitely it should have pleasant taste, odor and color, should be economical, it should it should be dimensionally stable, uh, it should have sufficient tear strength, it should uh, permit multiple pour without distortion, should have uh, sufficient working, mixing and setting time so that you can work easily with that type of material and it should be easily removed from the mouth without tearing. Another thing it should uh, have adequate flow and it should record the tissues accurately. Also uh, impression material is desirable which can be easily manipulated and which does not require uh, extensive use of equipments. So these were all the requirements for an impression material. Now what we want to look into an impression, how uh, your impression should be. One uh, what we desire in an impression is it should be dimensionally stable and it should be able to reproduce accurate details of the soft and hard tissues. It should adequately wet the oral tissues and um, also an impression should have sufficient elasticity after uh, setting that is after curing so as to facilitate multiple pouring of the impression. That is the impression can be preserved. Uh, it should not get distorted after single pouring or removal of the cast. You can have multiple pouring if desired uh, from an impression material. So these are all the properties which you are going to look into an impression. Now let us see what are various impression techniques which are used in uh, commonly used in fixed prosthodontics. The impression techniques are classified on the basis of type of impression trays uh, and these techniques are the stock tray or putty wash impression technique. You have the custom tray when you are using a custom tray. Uh, then third is dual arch or a close bite or a triple tray impression technique. Then you have the segmental impression techniques and uh, you have the post space impression technique. So we will be talking about each of these techniques one by one. So first the stock tray or putty wash impression technique. Now there are three methods of making a putty wash impression with elastomeric impression material. The advantages by using a stock tray is that the metal stock trays are rigid and they do not distort very easily. These stock trays are readily available, easy to procure 
and they save extra cost of fabricating custom trays. So these are all the advantages of using a stock tray. The drawbacks of using a stock tray is there is, ne there is a need for sterilization of the tray that is very important and secondly more ma impression material is required. So there is a kind of wastage using uh, because they are stock trays they are not accurately fitting onto the uh, onto the uh, the arch that is the reason there are chances of wastage of the material now let us see what are the three methods in this technique the first method is you are using a putty material to make a custom tray now how do you make a custom tray with the putty material so on the diagnostic cast, what you're going to do, you will going to take one layer of wax, which is placed on the primary cast and this will act as a spacer. And uh, you will be removing wax only from the non-functional cast region, uh, which will then act as the, uh, as the occlusal stop. You will mix the putty material and then you load the stock tray and place it over this wax spacer on the primary cast you will allow this material to uh, polymerize and once it is polymerized it is set then you will be having a putty custom tray with you after removing the uh, putty custom tray from the diagnostic cast you are going to remove the wax spacer and um, the next step would be you are going to uh, see the prepared teeth in the patient's mouth and you are going to inject uh, the the prepared teeth with light body elastomeric impression material. So once you have injected that, you are going to take the putty custom tray uh, and you are going to press it onto the prepared teeth. So this way the loaded impression tray is uh, used to make the complete arch impression. This method is one of uh, the way, uh, one of the most acceptable methods of using a stock tray uh, like the putty wash impression technique for making impressions of the uh, prepared teeth. The second method of making impressions using a stock tray is uh, it is a two step method and in this what you are going to take uh, what you are going to do is you are going to place the uh, plastic sheet over the prepared teeth that is in the arch in which we are making an impression and then you are going to uh, load the uh, putty material in a stock tray and then you are going to place the stock tray with the loaded material onto the plastic sheet uh, which is which will be covering the entire teeth. So once the, the putty material is cured or polymerized then you are going to remove it. You are going to remove the uh, plastic sheet and uh, this step uh, the plastic sheet will behave as a spacer. So once you have removed the plastic sheet, then you are going to uh, you are going to use the light body uh, impression material. You are going to syringe the light body impression material over the prepared teeth and into the spacer region of the putty tray, and then you are going to place this uh, stock tray onto the the arch in which we are making an impression, and will allow that material to to polymerize. The drawback of this region is it is very difficult to control uh, wash impression material in the relieved region one. Secondly, as the material flows into the unrelieved areas, it creates a problem of hydraulic distortion of the putty material as it is seated intraorally. So by uh, clinical experience also we can see that once we have made impression with uh, putty material in the stock tray then accurately fitting that into the uh, prepared teeth or into the mouth back into the mouth is it, it is difficult this is because of the hydraulic distortion of the putty material and uh, that is one reason that is one big drawback of this this technique the third method of making impression is uh, a single step technique also called as the squash uh, or uh, the simultaneous technique and here the uh, the stock tray is loaded with the putty material and also with the light body elastomeric impression uh, material is injected around the prepared teeth uh, or tooth simultaneously. And once you are doing that simultaneously, you are going to place the tray with the putty material over the prepared teeth. And the impression is made 
in a single step you need not repeat the step and both the putty and the syringe, uh, syringe materials are polymerized simultaneously this approach should not be used as it is not possible to control the thickness and bulk of the impression material which is used and also it is impossible to control the flow of either material on the prepared uh, tooth surface by clinical experience also we can say that uh, the heavy putty material will displace the low viscosity material and um, in order to capture the prepared margins so if we have the putty material which is capturing the prepared margin it will not be that accurate as it would have been with the low viscosity elastomeric compression material so this uh, technique is definitely not recommended for uh, clinical use and for making uh, impressions in fixed prosthodontics next impression technique is by using custom trays the custom trays are used when you are making impression in most of the distal most part of the arch and that is where the stock tray uh, does not uh, stock tray does not cover the teeth or a tooth in that arch and that is where stock trays uh, the custom tray should be used and also it is indicated where arch does not conform to the dimensions of the stock trays so again the importance of custom tray and also where you are uh, preparing multiple teeth so in all these these are indications for using a custom tray for making final impressions the the method uh, is it is a single step technique on the how do you make the custom tray on a diagnostic cast you are going to place two sheets of base plate wax and you are going to adapt it onto the cast and then you are over the wax you are going to um use a uh, aluminum foil so that uh, the the polymer uh, and monomer mix does not penetrate into the uh, into the wax because uh, when you are mixing the uh, self cure resins to make the custom tray then with the exothermic heat it can melt the wax and it can merge into the wax uh, therefore it reduces the accuracy of your custom trays so that is the reason you should use some kind of aluminum foil over that and uh, once you have used that aluminum foil uh, then you will apply uh, your separating media on the uh, other part of the cast which is exposed so that uh, the auto polymerizing resin does not stick onto the diagnostic cast and Uh, then after that you are going to uh, uh, mix the self cure resins with with the bulk bulk method or salt and pepper method whatever is preferable you can use either of the methods to uh, make the fabricate the custom tray once the custom tray is ready then you are also going you are going to remove the wax and the aluminum foil and you should create vents that is you you are going to create holes onto that uh, custom tray so this is for better holding of the impression material whenever you are making impression another thing which can you can do is you can roughen the impression surface of the uh, custom tray uh, so that uh, better bonding is there between the uh, elastomeric impression material and the custom trays now on the inner surface of the custom tray you are going to apply a tray adhesive and uh, this ad a tray adhesive is applied uniformly on the custom tray then you are going to load uh, medium body elastomeric impression material or even a heavy body elastomeric impression material onto the tray and you are going to inject the prepared uh, teeth with uh, light body uh, elastomeric impression material and then you are going to place this loaded tray over to Uh, the prepared teeth for making accurate impression once the material is polymerized you are going to remove the impression and inspect it for uh, the accuracy and the accurate details so the advantage of this technique is that the impression material is less is used less in comparison to these stock trays because they are well fitting on the on the teeth and uh, they are more hygienic as it is custom made for a particular patient also the uniformity of the thickness of the impression material reduces the chance of distortion because it is a uniform uh, uniform gap between the teeth and the custom tray because you are already using a two uh, two thickness of wax as a spacer 
while you were fabricating the custom tray. The disadvantage of custom tray is it is time consuming, con consuming procedure and uh, it cannot be used in other patients and also it cannot be used in patients who are uh, allergic to monomer or sensitive to monomer. Next technique is the dual arch or triple tray or close bite impression tray technique. They, this type of technique is indicated and um, is used in patients with existing anterior guidance. Secondly, they can be used in patients who can completely close and maximum intercuspation. So you need to have uh, the uh, teeth both anterior and posterior to the prepared teeth if you are going to use this type of tray and uh, they should be used for maximum of two prepared teeth and use. The uh, method of using this technique is the fit of the tray is evaluated and the patient is instructed to bite onto the tray. So you're going to check the uh, bite, uh, you are going to ask the patient to bite onto this tray and you're going to check the fit of it, the occlusion on the opposing arch is checked uh, using the mylar strip, it should be a tight contact so that um, you can get a good impression. Now you are going to mix a high viscosity elastomeric impression material and load it onto the tray and you are going to inject uh, the low viscosity that is light body material onto the prepared teeth and you will ask the patient to bite onto this tray. Patient is instructed to bite in maximum intracuspation position and you will in this position you will allow this material to polymerize. Once the material is polymerized the patient is asked to open the mouth slowly and then you are going to remove the impression tray and you are going to evaluate your impression. So the advantage of this material is you are using very less impression material as only one section of the arch is recorded and also you are recording both the arches simultaneously. So you do need not uh, use two different um, uh, trays and make two separate impressions for both the upper and the lower arch. Thirdly, the teeth are recording, recorded in maximum intracuspation position and uh, definitely this, this technique will be very useful for patients who are uh, potential gaggers or who, who are known gaggers. Also, this technique eliminates any mandibular fracture uh, uh, that may occur during opening of the jaw. The drawback of this technique is as the trays are not rigid, the distortion of the impression material can occur and um, that will question the accuracy of the impression. And sometimes uh, you may find that the buccolingual width of the arch is wider than the tray, then this type of tray should not be used. The contraindications for this type of technique is the in patients with rapidly ascending ramus where you have the, the presence of third molars and um, they are contraindicated uh, where you have excesses soft tissues posterior to the last molars. So you should avoid using in these areas. So this is about the dual arch impression tray technique. Then you have the segmental impression technique. Now this technique is indicated in cases where simultaneous impression is made up of multiple teeth and it is also indicated in patients where uh, you have the, the moisture control or isolation is difficult and uh, it can also be used in patients who have limited mouth opening like the patient with oral submucous fibrosis. So not a severe form of course where the patient cannot open the jaw but in where patient can partially open the jaw so you can use a segmental impression technique. How to use this technique? The impression of the arch with multiple prepared teeth is made in segments. So you are going to divide the segments. You are also going to make uh, the custom tray segment wise. So if you are using only a single segment then you can use a segment segmental stock tray or otherwise if you are using multiple uh, prepared teeth then you are going to prepare custom trays in segments over the diagnostic cast and uh, all the segmented trays you should ensure before making impression that they should be able to seat on the cast simultaneously and uh, you should be able to provide some kind of uh, junction which can form as an attachment uh, between all the three 
or two types of segmental trays. So you're going to apply a tray adhesive as you were doing in a custom tray uh, and you on the internal surface of the custom tray and then you're going to mix it with uh, your uh, auto mix polyvinyl siloxane is loaded onto the tray and uh, you're going to seat it onto the segment particular segment of that arch on the prepared tooth. So once the material is set, the tray is not removed and uh, next you next you will be recording the another segment uh, again it is loaded and seated over uh, that particular segment so once you have completed uh, make, uh, made impressions with uh, like this of the entire arch then you are going to use a stock tray and uh, you are going to use a oversized stock tray which is used to make a pick up impressions with appropriate material and then you are going to once the material sets the, then you are going to remove the entire uh, assembly which will be containing the segmental trays and also the stock trays. The completed impression is will be then evaluated and poured. The disadvantage with this technique is uh, you will not be able to uh, evaluate each segment uh, before making the final impression. So once only you will be only able to evaluate the 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 impression once the entire impression is out you may have a problem in one of the segments so because of that it may be possible that you have to repeat the entire impression next impression technique is the post space impression technique now this is when i was talk talking about the post and uh, core uh, section then in the in that uh, I had mentioned about the indirect technique of impression making that is indirect technique of fabricating the post and core uh, in custom made post and cores so it is the same here what we are going to do we are going to have a J shaped wire stainless steel wire and once you have done the post space preparation you are going to place this J shaped wire check uh, whether it is going uh, till the end or not and then after that you want to roughen this wire please uh, you want to apply a tray adhesive on this wire and you are going to then once you are sure about that then you are going to coat this uh, wire with a light body elastomeric impression material and with the help of lentero spiral you are going to place the light body impression material into the post space then you are going to place the wire inside that and then you are going to mix a putty material um, once you have injected the light body impression material all around the uh, the tooth then you are going to take the uh, putty material in a stock tray and you are going to place over that in order to complete the impression. So once you have removed this, uh, once this is polymerized you are going to remove it. You have to take care that you don't tear off uh, the, the material and the wire does not come out. So once you have done that. Uh, once once you have carefully removed it then you're going to pour it with your gypsum product and then you get a cast in which you have you will be replicating uh, the the post space and this post space will be used for fabricating uh, the wax pattern and then make a cast customized post and core so with this we come to end of various impression technique which are used in fixed prosthodontics Thank you for watching the video.